spreading to the cloud. Hello, everybody. Today, we are the 28th of June, 2022. Let's get started with the Jenkins Infrastructure Public Weekly Meeting. Around the table, we have your servitor, Damien Duportal, Hervé Lemeur, Mark Waite, uh, Basil is not there, Stefan Merle, and Bruno Varachten. Odang. Bruno Verachten. Thanks, everyone, for, for managing last week. So let's get started with the announcement. So the weekly went really fine this week. Uh, so release checklist is nearly complete, all good. So 2.357 uh, is ready to go. Uh, we already have been the image and it's ready to be deployed on InfraCI for uh, testing on the infra site. Do you have other announcements? Nope. None uh, for me. Okay, cool. So let's go to the task that we have closed during the past week. Um, first of all, Azure service principle expired for AKS cluster temp private gates. Uh, it expired today. I failed uh, to remind the team last week because I was off and I forget to put that, but we had a calendar and I was reminded of that by my calendar this morning. So the calendar is still a good idea for expired credentials. Um, we run the operation, the three of us, Stefan, Hervé and Hai, for the sake of knowledge sharing. Everything went fine. The impacts uh, were our details on the issue, only on infra CI, so no public impact. Uh, we didn't know when on a situation where the cluster was broken or in a weird state. We did that uh, quite early. Uh, it has been documented. Uh, I've put some notes. And thanks for team for reminding us that in the future for the upcoming AKS cluster, we should use another identity system than service principle that will have the benefit of not requiring a secret to rotate uh, regularly. So just a note for everyone, let's use identity instead of service principle. It's written on the correct issue. So no worries if you don't memorize it, but for the sake of sharing the information. Any question? Nope. Next one, a huge one, Update Center stopped updating last week. Uh, we had an issue with the algorithm used by the update center generator. So the job that uh, read all the latest pl published plugin and try to generate that index JSON file that everyone download when starting a Jenkins instance or checking for new plugins. Um, the issue was on the Java code used to build that JSON file uh, related to the way we cache the files. So that generation only take a few minutes instead of hours. Um, so there have been multiple exchanges, it's now closed. The impact was some users during the weekend due to a bad decision for, from me, literally. So good experience collectively. Um, they were unable to update or install AWS plugins because one of the plugins was ignored because it was the plugin causing the file name to long issue. So as a general team learning, next time that we have an issue on the update center, it's better to let the update center being unable to be updated for a few days than trying to just uh, remove one plugin to let the other plugin fixed. That will be the default to go. When, when you are alone and you have to take that decision, please let it in a failed state. As soon as the JSON file is in the correct state at a given moment on time, and let's wait a few days, we can always go back and correct it. Um, exception for security issues, but the security team know how to handle that. I tried to summarize it. Do you have any questions or feel unclear on what happened for that one? Cool. So it's closed, uh, confirm closed. It's been 28 hours without errors. So thanks a lot, Daniel, for the help. Mark, Hervé, and Stefan for helping along the way. And everyone who reported happily that having the issue on Helpdesk publicly browsable 
from GitHub help them to have information and follow up. So again, uh, thanks Hervé for driving that move from Jira to GitHub. Definitively a collective improvement. To add about uh, this issue, I also saw Daniel open the pull request to remove the limit on the plugin uh, name length. Because nice one. Uh, now we don't have uh, any, any problem with them. That's a cool thing. That means we can start again having a lot of weirdly named plugin with weird versions. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing. Nice feature. Um, next topic, migrate documentation from Wiki to GitHub for Nutanix Calm plugin. Uh, so that's a usual plugin maintainer task. So thanks for the person who did that. Uh, not really infrastructure, but uh, still part of directly. Uh, but yeah, we have a notification. Our LDEX system is the entry point for this user. So happy that we were able to fix that uh, quickly. Uh, update center is not updated. Uh, I assume it's the same issue. Oh no, that's the previous one. Hey. <laughs> um, Two days before the big failure I mentioned about file name too long when generating the bit center, there was another issue. Uh, so also team information. It was blocked with a file inside that uh, uh, cache system. A file was empty. Usually it's a downloading error that happened. We have a run book with a set of commands to type on the SSH agent machine. So that procedure is really easy. You connect to the machine indicated on the run book, which is a private link, by the way. You copy and pass the command, you run it, and then uh, even better, you run it on trusted CI, sorry. It's a groovy command executed on the agent, really useful. You run the command, it shows the files that has been cleaned up. You run the build and then it goes back to green. So if you have that issue, know that, check the run book before, because most of the time, Daniel spent quite a, the amount of time to document these elements. No question? Um, Jenkins, so the latest LTS Jenkins released last week during the security advisory. Uh, as during the 24 hours following Mathomenos, uh, uh, following the release, was putting a warning there was a new Jenkins version while users were already using the latest. So that one was a consequence of uh, one issue on the update center that was fixed. And then since the update center was not updated, we weren't able to publish to an user that change did by Daniel after the release. So that took a few hours to be available for everyone. So thanks a lot for everyone involved in uh, notifying this. Uh, that was really uh, useful to have a quick notification at the end of the release. We were able to fix that really quickly. So LTS released, weekly released, previous LTS released. So that means we had to update all of our controller instance to benefit from the security updates. Done in less than one day. So good job, people. Good job, automation as well. Build failure, Javadoc cannot produce locally. I have no idea what this issue is about. If any one of you knows, otherwise uh, we can... It doesn't seem to be uh, an issue, a issue. And Basil has given some advice to okay. the person to fix it. Okay. Okay, so thanks, uh, Peter. He opened thinking it could have been infra while it was configuration issue. So still better to have issues open thinking it's infra. We can always help and then close it. But yes, it wasn't. Thanks, Basil, for solving that one. Thanks, Harvey, for the reminder. Migrate from workflow CPS global lib to pipeline groovy lib. So that was an annoying warning uh, on your Jenkins instance because we moved the pipeline shard library logic and maybe other things from one plugin to others. Why? I don't remember and it's not a problem. But we had to remove a plugin, install another, and remove at least one dependency or ensure that one of these, the dependency of the workflow CPS global lib was removed. So thanks Stefan and Hervé for managing that. Uh, that was quite the exercise for the three of us, knowledge sharing. 
because between the Docker images and the manually managed instance on virtual machines, that was not that easy. So thanks for that work, folks. We, I'm not sure that is it, but uh, yeah. we'll see that later. Okay. Uh, is there a reason why did we close this one then? We might have closed uh, too quickly, no? I don't and remember, yes, I will. Okay. okay, so can you, you take care of that one? Yeah. Okay, adding a note. Uh, checks for cert.ci with the security team. So yeah, we have to check with them if they want to do the plugin changes or if they want us to do it. No problem, but we have to check with them. Last task. Weekly CI default view description diverge from the defined one. Um, so weekly CI is a public uh, Jenkins instance hosted at weekly.ci.jenkins.io. It has been created to show the latest design uh, material, the, what we call the Jenkins design library. And that requires to be using Jenkins weekly version. The only weekly version that we run is infra CI, which is not public. So it's a kind of public demonstrator. So that demonstrator had, has a description on top here, as you can see. And we discovered that the way we were configuring it using Jenkins configuration as code was, wasn't the correct version. So changes were made on the infra as code, but not applied. So it was not doing, uh, the, it was not behaving as expected. So we had to understand that and fix it. It's now done and details in the issue. Any question on these tasks that are, were finished? Did we miss any closed task that you did um, that we forgot on that list? Nope, okay. Work in progress. Cannot apt upgrade Jenkins from 2348 using pkg jenkins.org. I totally missed that one, but I answered. Hmm. Yeah. It's about uh, an HTTP reduction. Can you can you zoom in, please? Yes, of course. Okay, so someone is having an issue because they are using the Debian package repository in HTTP on the whole domain name, jenkinsci.org. So you assume it's a Jenkins that is quite old, or at least that existed since years, even if updated. Um, they fix the issue by themselves. Okay, I remember now. Um, we gave them information for anyone with the same error that we'll uh, gave, make here. That task is still open because that will be useful for us to add an HTTPS redirection from the old domain in HTTP and HTTPS to the new one. That will be the redirection on the Apache server on that machine. So any user using the old links will be automatically redirected to the new one without any problem because it's not the case today. Would that make sense for you folks? Yes. Okay. Is there someone okay for taking this one? That will be Poupette and Apache. Yes, please. Okay. Um, okay, adding to the next milestone. Uh, next work in progress. Claim that updates Jenkins IO certificate is sometimes expiring. So it's an issue followed up by Mark. Uh, a user complains that sometimes he see word be a uh, word certificate or unexpected certificate with TLS uh, invalid connection when checking updates Jenkins IO and get Jenkins IO. Uh, we also have a user that did something else weird. Um, what is hidden behind that? I try to show some element. We have to dig a bit more. For get Jenkins IO, as I, as I wrote, if the user does as an old HTTP client in HTTP 1.0 or an invalid one, 
like those Magica blue coat appliance in companies that provide security proxy, most of the time they tend to use word um, word behavior of HTTP, and that remove the host header or set the host header to an invalid value, or worse, to remove it at all. So HTTP server have to rely on SNI, which is at the TCP level, when any protocol of the application level try to open a standard TLS connection, like HTTP or MySQL, the first packages on TCP are unencrypted and provide a domain name as part of the first packet. Packets. The goal is to have the first uncheck and then encrypt the connection, and then you can have whatever you want in that channel. And that is in I, since it's unencrypted, it can be used to do the same thing as the virtual host routing. So in the case of Apache, Nginx, 2ES, and other web server, if they don't have an host header on the incoming request, they check the SNI, and then they try to determine the host name for the vhost, and then they can select and choose um, a certificate. Otherwise, they fall back to their default virtual host configuration to provide certificate. So in the case of get Jenkins IO on Kubernetes, if there isn't any information to select one of the ingress rules, which are basically vhosts, then it falls back to the default certificate. So we might have an issue when the Apache server on the machine is not able to generate the initial uncheck. And what we tend to see on, sometimes we have error on updates Jenkins CI, the error that the second user on the line is still in the same area. We have issues with the machine update Jenkins IO. Sometimes it dropped the TLS uncheck connection, which might lead to the issue that the user reported initially. So right now, no action for us to be done there. Trust me, I've spent quite the amount of time this weekend to run some TCP dumps on the machine for another subject on the Docker area. Uh, the thing is we have an old version of Apache. It's not, and there are issues with old ones. So we need to use a more recent version. And that's one of the next issues. Migrating that machine to Oracle will have the benefit of solving these issues. Is there any question, anything is unclear on that topic or someone that doesn't agree and we can absolutely discuss and take that in consideration. So is it okay that we keep the issue open because for me the issues exist and I want to acknowledge it and I will need to add the comments that that should be solved by the other ones merged. Do we have any, any tracking of, of the issue in, in any logs to make sure that with the new Apache, the logs are disappearing? You cannot see that on the logs because it, since this is the TCP uncheck failing, Apache yeah. doesn't even know it has a connection oh. because the kernel never tell him. Yeah, That's the, the kernel it, level, we don't have any, any logs. No, <laughs> and that's a good thing. Otherwise, the machine will spend It'd its time. Full of its logs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, however, uh, by TCP dump, you can see the issue happen. Some packets are lost. I propose that we link that issue to the Oracle Update Center. So we remove that issue from the milestone. We had a comment there explaining that. So once we have migrated, we can test again that issue and put it back on our priority list. But right now it has to be kept open and there is no action item for us. So I propose we remove it from milestones. Yeah, we will be able to ask people to, to check for us too, and to confirm Absolutely. that the problem is solved. Okay. Absolutely. Otherwise, we can switch to Nginx. That will solve the issue one for one. <laughs> I'm, I'm amazed it. that you haven't done that yet, but yeah. Um, next task is uh, remo consider removing embeddable build status plugin. That's the plugin that provides this tiny building or failing or passing uh, icons, images. That's a request from security team because security, a lot of security and the main maintainer of the plugin is not uh, able to work on it anymore. So he helped to solve the latest security issue from the free past advisories. However, uh, security team seems pretty frightened by that plugin. So either someone uh, jump up to maintain that plugin, either we remove it. So we removed on almost all the controllers, 
or ensure it wasn't installed except CI Jenkins IO because we have one last task. It's sending an email to the mailing list telling the developer, hey, we are, we are removing now that plugin from CI Jenkins IO. So you might see these images broken on your readme of your Jenkins plugin. You have to remove it. That's all, just to let them know as a courtesy. Uh, Mark proposed to do pull request on the 163 location where it was used. Uh, uh, why uh, not? Could be a great exercise for automating such change, but yep. Um, Jason used uh, GIST to to update uh, Jenkins CI repository with its new Maven CD workflow. Mm -hmm. And uh, not my fault on him. Uh, exchange uh, on the issue just right now. And yeah, we could use uh, this list uh, to update, uh, to create uh, pull requests. I also think we should oh, add, uh, we should also should add in an issue on the plugin repository, and then a pull request to add a replication notice or a deactivation notice. Cool. I didn't know. Uh, is there, are you interested or will you be able to yeah, yeah. follow up I, on this I one? Nope, no, yeah. Cool. Or if anyone else is interested, of course, you can pair with Hervé. It's just that uh, it's interesting, but I, I don't have the time. I'm focusing on the infra. No, no, honestly, I would like, that would have been really useful for me uh, during the past months. So as soon as someone on the team is able to automate such change, that's, that's really important because when we do, uh, large-scale changes on the infra that need to be applied yep. to uh, thousands of pipelines. If we're able to automate such change, wow! Of also course. So, uh, Combi, which is a tool to to deal with uh, refactoring uh, in multiple language, and its uh, expression is uh, far easier than some said or regex expression. Nice. It's made for this, and it could be nice to. So you will have to of, uh, you will have to present the result to us. <laughs> yeah, it's a trap. I, yeah, <laughs> no, I also I will make a crude version with uh, like Jason uh, did, which isn't uh, that crude, but yeah, no there problem. Improvement. The the only mandatory part here is solving the issue. That means if you are able yeah. to open pull requests, but send a notif and remove I'm, the plugins, that's yeah, all is required. I'm interested by this because, yeah, as you said, I think a way to a mass update repository or open pull request on them will be good to have. Absolutely. Th absolutely. That will be really useful and nice. It's just to put a barrier on the, you decide the amount of time, but what is expected from the infra part is being able to remove the plugin and at least send the courtesy notification to the end users. Yep. Uh, cool. Enable development integration in Jira. So that one was posed. Um, I will go back on this one. That might be a bit painful and we will need a OAuth token from the Jenkins CI admins. Uh, the goal is to integrate Jira integration again with the GitHub issue. So Jira is able to mention pull request or the other way around or something. Uh, we cannot use, uh, like we, say, uh, we said two weeks ago that we should use a, a GitHub app. It's not possible with the version and the configuration we have. So we need to create a technical user on Jenkins CI parts that would have the some rights, I hope not too much administration. And that user will have the same permission on all the repositories of Jenkins CI. Uh, I don't think we should do it for Jenkins Infra, but that might happen because some there might be some needs to synchronize the task of different trackers. So I hope no but we might need. So I will double check unless someone want to take it. Hervé, is it okay if I remove your assignment from this one since you have already other task or do you want to keep working on this one? You, either way, it's good for me. 
I keep both and we'll see the first to finish his task. We'll take it up. Um, evaluate retry condition to improve stability of the builds. So this is an experimental plugin. We should have done that last week, but between the security advisory, the overload of all the team and the issue with update center, we weren't able to do that. So I will try, we will try to resume that. That will mean installing uh, plugins that are not the latest stable version, but they are incremental builds plugin, e.g. from pull request. The goal again is to be able to have build restarted when the agent goes down for an unexpected reason. Uh, that's a war from Jesse Glick, and we should be able to try it again on CI Jenkins. Uh, I keep uh, working on that one unless someone is interested, because now everyone has played with the plugin on CI Jenkins IO with the removal. So anyone should be able to try this one. So by default, I keep my assignment because I started discussing with Jesse, but anyone interested can take over. I don't mind. One, two, three, I keep it. Uh, replace uh, CPUZ agent. I see it's connected to Gen CI Jenkins IO. It's managed by Mark. I assume it's done. I will ping him on the issue. Nothing for us to do. CI Jenkins IO provide PowerShell on the Windows Docker image used on ACI. Um, hmm? So that so means. Who's, uh, uh, it's yes. It's still building. I have to 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 pump to have to get the last uh, tag build. I'm not sure. Maybe yeah. He has finished. Okay. And I have to pump <coughs> some it used in uh, Jenkins Safra and see what needs to be done on the current wind engine. Okay, yeah, because the target is ACI in that case. Yeah. So okay. we can so only close once it's on the container wi Windows container images. The virtual machine on so the image are bonus. So almost there. Okay. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me fix that uh, one for the future. Uh, um, uh, it was a. Uh, what do you? Think of uh, for every agent we have, it doesn't. We shouldn't have to check if PowerShell or PWSH is present on the agent and be sure it's always present. Absolutely. Okay, provide both PowerShell and SH on all agent templates. Does it sound good to you? So it includes your work on the virtual machine and any other kinds. You have been assigned and almost there. So let's keep continuing unless I miss something. No, it's good. Docker Abe rate limiting, no news from Docker. Um, I need to send again an email. I don't know. Um, we add some rate limiting on when building the official Jenkins image, Docker image. Uh, we did some actions. I will need to update uh, some template configuration because we are using public IP for all virtual machines on CI Jenkins IO. I will try to remove the high memory instances that are not used for Docker, even though they have Docker. Um, and that will allow us to spawn more machines because we have a hard limit on Azure that we cannot grow of a 50 per whatever region, or I don't remember the green. Um, and still we need Docker to answer to us yes or no, so we can decide of the strategy then. Harvey mentioned the idea of using GHCR images, which might require for us to mirror at least daily image from Docker Hub to GHCR, which might require rate limit, but once a day, that should be okay. And then we could do the amount of build we want. We can have a proxy, there are solution, but we need an answer to decide the, the next course. So I'm taking over that one. Um, is it okay, everyone, if next week, if we don't still don't have an answer from Docker, uh, then we start deciding stop using the Docker Hub and selecting another solution. 
either changing the registry or putting a proxy in front of this one. So next week yeah. we start taking another decision. Sounds good to you? Yeah. Okay. Upgrade to Kubernetes 1.22. So DigitalOcean and Azure, uh, Amazon are OK. And I have, uh, yes. I have almost finished uh, to take the change log, the AKS change log. Nothing particular for now. Great. And we, Stefan has already opened the announcements, and we will start the grade uh, on Thursday morning uh, around uh, 9 or 10 uh, CEST. Cool. Great. So they will be the 31, is that correct? 30. 30. 30. Thanks. Thanks, folks. Good job. So almost there on this one. Digital Ocean sponsorship runs out of credit stopping the cluster. Why is it still open? Did I forget to close this one? Uh, we can close this one, I think. OK, so I will close it. So it, I will move it in the meeting note as closed. So thanks, Hervé, for adding back DigitalOcean cluster with the new credits that we had since last week. It's now used or should be used by CI Jenkins IO. Uh, but there is no operation on the stopping the cluster and now Hervé, you drive the next step with digital ocean in terms of sponsorship to grow the sponsorship the um, let's say at least keeping the same rate for using kubernetes but also being able to spin up a mirror or two in asia and eventually start using packer image and virtual machine for the linux agents the intel ones docker docker builds that we used on different machines any question? And last big one. Ah, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. good. Okay. Last big one. Migrate updates Jenkins IO to another cloud to solve these TCP issues, certificate issues, alert issues, uh, and provide better experience and faster uh, faster index download for the end users. Um, so I've taken over temporarily that task from uh, Stefan to let him focus on Kubernetes upgrade with Hervé. So Stefan did already a lot of work on the Terraform management. He was able to dig on how Oracle Cloud works. So huge work there. Um, I took over the IAM part. So how do we uh, how do we separate production and staging on the Oracle Cloud? Because the way we use Oracle Cloud right now is all users have all permissions which I don't mind for humans like you folks, but that's a problem for Terraform automated changes. We don't want the Terraform test harness trying to manipulate resources in production. So I'm currently losing my heirs, like uh, Stefan lost his last week, on how do we set permission between um, cloud services, users, groups, etc. But we're almost there. Uh, thanks to Stefan Works, uh, you already have some pre-built uh, work. And now I'm trying to uh, make it really fine-tuned like we do on AWS. So expect some uh, uh, change. The first virtual machine should be created this week. That's all for the work in progress. I've put some top new topics here. The two first one, we need to evaluate them and put them on the next milestone. The three other are bonuses. CI setup for Jenkins Infra plugin health core. So we had a request from Adrien Le Charpentier. Uh, he's a CloudBiz employee and he's above all a mentor of the GSOC project about plugin health. Uh, the goal is to have an health indicator based on some attributes for each plugin. It's an experimental project as part of the Google Summer of Code, the JSOC. Um, they ask for us to help to be able to build and test the application for now, no deployment involved. Adrien gave us some details on what he expects, what he needs. So we have to answer him by pointing him to some documentation and eventually example pipeline. He need to know 
what agent and capabilities can he use in CI Jenkins IO? He prepared a, a pipeline and he is missing the agent to use. Absolutely. So the goal will be to point him the documentation and give him a hint on you might want to use docker dash linux dash md64. That's the summary. Mm -hmm. um, we initially had the discussion with uh, Stefan on that part, but given the workload, yes, when we were all together in Brussels. However, it's not an expectation. So I'm challenging that element right now. Is it, do you still want it given you what you want or don't want to do and given your bandwidth? I'd like not to, please. I don't want yes. to, no problem. to be rude for Adrian, but uh, no, no, I don't no problem. remember that, I'm sorry. No problem. The goal is the team to handle the task. The goal is not for Stefan to handle the task personally. So if you cannot, no problem. Say you cannot, so the other know and they can take over. I cannot. Um, Hervé, is it okay if I take it or do you want yeah. to exchange well, with take Adrien? It. Take it, I'll exchange with him for the deployment later, I think. Okay. Oh, Bruno would like to know, don't you? Bruno, you want to take it? <laughs> uh, uh, um, no. <laughs> you. Unless you want it to be um, supplied at the very end, after the end of the GSOC. Why not? <laughs> no problem. Um, next one is require Java 11 infrastructure thread. So in fact, that task was already worked on. That has been created by Basil. Um, we already started to work. So the goal is just to add it on the milestone to track it. It's about all the work required on infrastructure, code, repositories, communication, about the Java 11 requirement. The reason why I mentioned that is because we already use Java 11 everywhere by default for running Jenkins. And we started uh, with a low success three weeks ago, if you remember during the CDCon, we tried to force GDK 11 to compile Jenkins. That did not go very well. Now it's the case with the weekly that has been published today and that will be forced for the upcoming, if I'm not wrong, but either this week weekly or next week, that will be the first Jenkins version that doesn't support Gen uh, GDK 8 anymore. It is planned for September LTS line. So that means until September, we might still might need to provide GDK 8 on the infrastructure. But that means that issue will be a long running issue until end of the year, because we will have to remove GDK 8 from all of our assets in the future. So that's why I want it to be part of the milestone to materialize the fact that it's being worked on, not always by the infrastructure team, but still. Uh, team Basil and I were working on that, but that serves as a source of truth, especially given the, the big work that Basil did on that part, still really useful for us to audit if something goes wrong in the future. If you're interested, please read it. No expectation if you don't read it, no problem. Uh, but it's a task being worked on, so we need to work on it. And I personally spend some time sometimes on that one. And the reason why I mention it is because since GDK 17 will be the next one, um, I propose that in the upcoming week, I might create an issue on the infra for not this iteration, but the next one. So don't be uh, uh, surprised. I will want to try running infra CI since it's a kind of over the edge machine using GDK 17. Numerous reasons for that. The most important one for us is that with the upcoming Kubernetes upgrade 1.22 that you're going to do Thursday, the underlying machine are going to use Cgroups version two, which means the way memory is handled uh, is different and GDK 11 hasn't had the back ports required to correctly set the memory limits. So it's like going back on GDK 8 before the C groups management. Using GDK 17 though will help us. So that's a great excuse for us to ensure 
that we try and start using GDK 17 in production. We need the first evaluation of uh, uh, Basil notes about uh, what are the known issue today, but as soon as we can, the more instances we run in production, the more feedbacks and bug reports we can do to the developer. So don't be surprised and anyone interested in that part, don't hesitate to take the issue, but not that uh, iteration, but by moving that, this one as main part of our work, we'll prepare the field for the GDK 17 uh, work. Um, I mentioned this one, it's not mandatory to take it over. It's uh, nice to have uh, managing the version of the Elastic Kubernetes cluster, so uh, the Kubernetes cluster managed on AWS that has been upgraded yesterday by, by you folks. The goal is now being able to manage the version of the modules installed. So modules are plugins to manage network and DNS inside the cluster, mainly. We have three modules. These modules are installed when you create a new cluster. And we add during the past two Kubernetes upgrades to update this module manually in the UI. It seems that our Terraform configuration is able to track the presence or not of these modules. And it's mentioning as a warning, but not as an actionable item, that the version can are, have changed because of the manual updates. That means that if we find a source of truth, where are the latest version of the plugins depending on the Kubernetes version that we are running? There is a big matrix on the AWS documentation at least. If we're able to find a way to get that version number, then that means we will be able to update this one as part of the Kubernetes upgrade in the future, full as code and audit auditable. Can I take this one? I think you reported it, so I've, oh yeah. Okay, you are assigned. Oh, good, perfect. So thanks, Stefan, for opening that issue. And two main tasks uh, we will have to create a new private Kates cluster based on Tem private that will replace Tem private without service credentials, so no more identity with a secret that expire. And once created, we can start migrating release CI and other in that private environment. So next main task after migrating update CI and finish cleanup of mirror brain, poor puppet cleanup that could impact the upcoming releases. So better doing that in July when we will have less activity. Do you have other new important topics that you will want to work on? Uh, many thanks, Hervé, for the issue exporter that allows me to avoid copy-pasting name of the images. Uh, there is a draft pull request open. So even if it's not, it wasn't working on my machine for the first try, but still you were able to copy and paste. So I assume it's a collective uh, improvement. So many thanks for that one. I hope we will be able to use it next time. Many thanks for that. And again, thanks for your work. Um, okay, that's all for me. Do you have other topics that you will want to bring? No, it's all good. Okay, so see you next week. I'm now stopping the, the screen sharing, stopping the recording.